So we're going to talk about a, a year on our example ranch and we're sitting in College Station, Texas today and so we'll use that as our, as our example. But realize depending on where you're located at, you can take these fundamentals we're talking about and you'll just adjust them based on your production environment, your forage base, your calving season. But when we look at College Station and we're going to talk about a cow-calf operation and what I mean with that is obviously we have cows hopefully they're having a calf every year and we're going to sell those um, calves and so if we look at central texas east texas south central texas a very common forage base would be bermuda grass it's a warm season perennial forage that will grow uh, as long as temperatures are above about 60 degrees in, at night time um, it'll green up before then but as far as meaningful forage production, we're talking about 60 degrees or higher. Just want to quickly, I mentioned a perennial forage. What I mean by that is a perennial forage like the dormant Bermuda grass we're standing in here today grows year after year after year. We don't have to worry about replanting it. Whereas when we talk about annual forages, those are forages that have to be seeded every year. Now, sometimes they may volunteer uh, from seed that was left the previous year. Ryegrass is a perfect example of that. In a large section of the state of Texas, if you've ever planted ryegrass, you'll have volunteer ryegrass as you move forward uh, in the future. Whereas other plants, if we're talking about something like sorghum sudan, which is a warm season annual forage, forage or we're talking about wheat or oats, which are cool season annual forages, we actually have to put seed in the ground every year to get those plants to grow and produce for us. And so when we think about that forage management plan, the first thing we need to think about is how long does Bermuda grass, or we could actually use Bahia grass, they cover a lot of the same uh, region with the exception that Bahia grass is a little more in East Texas and doesn't move over into Central or South Texas. We need a little sandier environment with a little lower uh, pH typically but they're going to have the same growing season. And so when we think about those forages located here in College Station, that Bermuda grass is going to start greening up uh, sometime during March, depending on the year. But it's important to realize, even though it's green, we may have just a little bit out there, it's not really growing and it's not providing meaningful forage to those cows at that point in time. So really from a production standpoint, it's going to be into April. So College Station, mid-April is a pretty good time to think about. Typically, if we're getting rain, we have enough forage to start grazing it pretty routinely. And then it's going to grow from mid-April to about the 1st of November, mid-November. And so that would be our growing season for Bermuda grass. But we have to realize, even though it's growing during that period of time, it doesn't grow equally throughout the year. We actually have what would be referred to as a bimodal growth pattern. So in the spring when we're getting more rain typically, so late April and May is when we have the majority of our forage produced and then in the summer it dips back off as we get less rainfall and we get higher temperatures and then as we start to get into September we typically start getting a little more rain again, we start getting a little cooler temperatures and we'll get another little bump in that forage production. And so the reason we need to think about that is how do we stock our ranch to make sure we're not overstocked for that grazing period? So it can be real temp tempting if we were setting out in this pasture, so it's middle of December right now, but let's say we fast forward and we're setting here middle of May. At that point in time, if it's a average year where we're getting average rainfall and we fertilize those pastures, we should have a tremendous amount of forage and it's real easy to say, hey, I want to have enough cows to graze all that forage at that point in time. But the challenge with that approach is, is that means the other 10 months out of the year, we're overstocked for our property. So it's all right not to use all that forage in the spring. And we'll talk about some ways to utilize it um, later on. And so we want to stock at a rate that would be comfortable where we have enough forage for the majority of that grazing season I talked about going from mid-April to 1st of November or mid-November for our example operation here. 
So the question becomes, if we're grazing from mid-April to mid-November, how do we fill in the rest of those gaps? Because we want to minimize the amount of time uh, we have to provide supplemental feed to those cows because cow calf operations work off of forage. That's the key to being successful in these operations. So one thing we can do is an approach called stockpiled forage. And realize that term means different things to different people, but the way I'm gonna define stockpile forage here in this example is a warm season perennial forage that we've let grow for 45 to 60 days. And instead of cutting a hay crop off of it, we leave it standing in the field and we'll come back and graze it. And so just to provide a little more detail, this pasture we're standing in here today is a great example of standing forage. And the way we would want to do that with Bermuda grass is roughly about 60 days before we're going to get that first good hard frost. We go in and we get the pasture grazed off to three to four inches or we cut hay off of it down to three to four inches. And if you had four to six, that's okay, but we don't want 12 or 18 inches of forage out there. So we're going to get it grazed off or hayed off. We're going to come in and we're going to fertilize it. If you have followed soil tests and applied phosphorus and potassium early in the year, the only thing we should really need for that stockpiled forage in this example is going to be nitrogen. A good rule of thumb for most operations is somewhere around 60 pounds of actual nitrogen is what we would need. So for our example here in College Station, we would come in roughly the first week or maybe that second week of September, have those pastures grazed off, we're going to fertilize them with that 60 pounds of nitrogen and then we're going to let that forage grow until the first frost. So we're going to be grazing other pastures somewhere else. At the time of that first frost, that forage is going to stop growing. Now the frost won't actually hurt the quality of the plant. The protein and the energy will still stay in the forage. It's just it's going to stop growing with that frost. And so at that point in time, typically we have our other pastures grazed off. It's not growing anymore, but we have this stockpiled forage that we can move to. So with the stockpiled forage, typically we'll get 45 to 60 days of grazing out of that forage. And so if we start mid-November, we typically want to have it grazed up by the 1st of January. All right. If we started 1st of uh, November we had enough we may could get 60 days instead of 45 days out of it but regardless of whether we're getting 45 or 60 days or maybe even in some situations if you get on it a little later 30 days we want it grazed up by the first of January preferably for sure no later than mid-January the reason being is with Bermuda grass Bahia grass any of the old world blue stems like WB, WWB doll or King Ranch blue stem is those forages, the quality or really the, the quality will drop a little bit, but it's dropping because those cows are going to start off by eating the top portion of the plant and eating the leaves. Then they're going to eat the next portion where they get more stem and left leaves. And then we just have stem. We don't want to graze it all the way down to the ground and force them to eat that stem. We want them to eat that, those higher quality leaves and then some of that leaf and stem. The other challenge we face, which prevents us from stockpiling for long periods of time, is rainfall. And so if we're getting rain like we would in the average year, the forage just starts getting kind of nasty and the palatability starts getting down. If we were to try to hold it into February or March or even April until the Bermuda grass started growing again. So stockpiled forage for this example, we're gonna shoot for grazing from about November 15th to the 1st of January. Just real quickly while we're on the topic of stockpile forage, if I was out in West Texas, so where we're getting say 15 or 20 inches of rain compared to the 40 to 45 inches of rain we're getting in College Station, it's gonna change our stockpiling scenario. So let's say we were grazing um, little blue stem, big blue stem in an area that had 15 inches of rainfall. A lot of times we're going to produce the majority of forage in about 60 days in the spring. In those situations, because we're dealing in a lower rainfall environment and we're dealing with a native perennial forage, 
rather than an introduced perennial forage, we can actually graze that for eight to 10, or maybe in some situations, 12 months a year. So the utilization of stockpile forage is gonna vary tremendously depending on what that forage base is we're using. And so we've got to the 1st of January now, but remember Bermuda grass doesn't start growing again until, or doesn't start providing meaningful grazing until mid-April. We gotta figure out how to get from the 1st of January to mid-April. So one way we can do that is with hay, and that's gonna be an option a lot of producers would use. And so at that point in time, we would take that hay that we made back in the spring when we had that excess forage because we were stocked at that moderate rate. And then we can feed that hay from the 1st of January to the middle of April to that Bermuda grass starts growing again. And so in that scenario, we're going Bermuda grass, stockpile Bermuda grass, hay, back to Bermuda grass. Another scenario we could look at is how can we incorporate winter annual forages into this system to reduce the amount of time we're having to feed hay? And so the winter annual forages that would be typical for this example ranch here in the College Station area <coughs> would be a small grain, and that would be something like oats or small grain rye or ryegrass. And realize rye and ryegrass are two different things. So rye is a bigger seed somewhat similar in size to oats, whereas ryegrass is a very small, very light seed. That rye would be just like if you've ever eaten rye bread, that's the grain that that would, would come from. And so if we're gonna use winter annual forages, the way we would do that is we talked about having some of the acreage that we stockpiled, we're gonna have another portion of our property that we're gonna prepare for winter seed, or winter, excuse me, winter annuals. And in this situation, we're gonna do what we call sod seeding. And so with sod seeding, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this Bermuda grass, this perennial forage, and we're not gonna plow it up. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna graze it short, two to three inches, or if you choose to take a hay crop off of it, that would be fine as well. So we're gonna get it, that stubble height down to two to three inches, a common practice a lot of producers will use is they'll take a disc, they'll turn the uh, blades on that disc straight and do what we call a light disking. And so they're just gonna go across that pasture once with those disc blades straight just to expose a little soil and to set that Bermuda grass back just a little bit so it doesn't compete too much with our cool season annual forages. And so then we would do that, and we're gonna do that late September, early October, and then we would come in and overseed that small grain or that ryegrass. So let's start with the small grain. If we're gonna use oats or small grain rye, we wanna make sure we use a drill, and if possible, we wanna get that seed three quarters of an inch deep, and then pull some type of a drag back over it to cover that seed up. If we're planting ryegrass, we only want to get that seed a quarter to a half an inch deep, no more than a half an inch deep. So again, depending on what soil type you were in, if you're in a little tighter soil, you could use a regular grain drill. Just watch and make sure you don't get it too deep and then drag back over it. Or what some producers will choose to do, and we can do this with ryegrass, but not the other forages, is spread it with the fertilizer spreader or a little spinner spreader, um, that would go on the three point of a tractor and then let the cattle walk it in. So we have some replacement heifers uh, around me in the picture today. We could get that somewhat short, turn those cows in there for a couple of days after we spread that seed to help get seed to soil contact. And then it's typically gonna, typically gonna be 60 to 90 days before that's ready to graze. One thing we have to realize is we call these winter annual forages, and that's a little bit of a little misleading as far as when those forages are really gonna produce. And so with the name winter annual forages, you would think they would grow December, January, and February. Well, in reality, they will grow a little bit during that point in time, but the majority of the growth is gonna come February, March, and April. 
And so in this situation, what we would do is we're still probably gonna have to feed hay for a little bit of time, but when that rye grass or when those oats or when that rye comes on, especially late January or February, we can start grazing at that point in time and reduce the time we have to feed hay for about 60 days. So in this situation, the way it would work is again, we have our Bermuda grass base that we'll have grazing from mid-April uh, through typically 1st of November or so. We're gonna have part of our acreage as stockpiled forage. And so we can hopefully graze that from mid-November to January 1. And then from January 1 until those winter annual forages come on, we're gonna have to feed hay but once they come on, then we can start grazing them until the Bermuda grass comes on again. And so that's how we can kind of think about that year long forage management program. Now realize if we're on the Gulf Coast, the amount of time we could graze those cool season annual forages is gonna be longer and they'll grow more during the winter because it's cooler. Whereas if we're in the panhandle of Texas, we probably wouldn't use ryegrass up there because it doesn't have quite as much cold tolerance, but we could use wheat in that situation and, and we could graze there. So just as a recap for our example ranch in College Station, Bermuda grass, April to November, stockpiled forage, and then either hay or those cool season annual forages. Now what do we need to do from a fertilizer standpoint? Because this forage system isn't gonna work without fertilizer in the equation. And so for our example, I would probably look at fertilizing at least three different times with nitrogen. And so the timings would roughly be sometime in April, and we're trying to target that Bermuda grass growth in the spring, September for that stockpiled forage, and then December to get those cool season annual forages going.